Hi, you're again with Volleyball Explained podcast and our edition about Italian volleyball. I'm Bogdan and here with me are again Ronnie from Cuban Spike and Nicola from Pilole di Volley. Today we are going to talk about the second, the third and the fourth round in the Italian Superliga. So my first question to you guys today is which matches from the second round firstly uh, do you do you want to to highlight because i believe that they are two by my side but then i'm going to to explain why i think in this way well i will start talking because i know nicola doesn't want to talk or doesn't want to remember <laughs> yeah my uh, round two and three unfortunately trentino of course will be a topic in this pod- podcast also the a little bit uh, strange perform uh, of Lube Civitanova against Ravenna which is uh, a young but a brave team and uh, yes for me that's uh, that's it uh, I think uh, we can we can say Perugia with Leon especially uh, will be also a topic in this podcast so yes for me mm, I think Uh, every result for me is uh, normal Mm, I have to mention that uh, well if you want to start talking I I will follow or Nicola can do it so yeah I mean as you said it's not like I just I won't remember the game between Trento Verona in in the second round where Trento lost uh, 3-0 at home against Radostoichev's I'd it was a shocking performance by Trento. A lot of mistakes and a forced error in attack. There were 12 by the end of the game. Uh, especially an important moment that led wasting many breakpoint chances uh, by Trento. Verona played its game, uh, led by an, an inspired and finally healthy Jeski. Uh, and the entire team had just uh, two errors in attack. Uh, Matej Kaviski put up a show in the end of the second set uh, to get the set uh, for his side. And they basically were more angry on the points over the 20th, uh, especially in the first two sets. And if you look at the stats, they were pretty similar at the end of the game, uh, but for the mistake, as I mentioned. And it was a better performance by the the whole group of spikers of uh, Verona, while Trento left a poor image on the on the field and uh, especially it showed a lack of connection between Lucarelli which is basically was his second game starting with Trentino and uh, and Gianelli <laughs> and a night to rem- not to remember not, for Trento not to remember. yeah yes. and one to remember for for But Verona I remember that I mentioned uh, maybe with regard to the match against Lube, that that uh, Verona playing with with Jaske and and Kaziski would be much better, and that actually proved against against the team of Trentino. But uh, unfortunately, you mentioned Jaske uh, healthy again. I believe that he's injured now again. So <laughs> but maybe we're going to talk. He's he's too fragile. But but this was an unbelievable performance. Uh, even though Trentino made uh, made some many errors, I believe. And the other team, again, I would like to highlight is, of course, the team of Ravenna because they have almost, not almost, but they have no stars. And they took in uh, in Civitanova two sets against against the, the team of Lube. So, so this is amazing performance by them, even even then, even though they have only, I think, four points for four matches. But but this is even I believe more than than expected uh, from the team by now. Uh, in the other matches, I don't believe we need to uh, to comment uh, uh, that uh, that match. Uh, Monza lost against Milano one to three, and Piacenza losing against Perugia, the favorite in this match one to three. Normal result. Uh, yes. yes, normal result and Padova Padova beating uh, Cisterna. We are going. I believe we can go. Uh, we can talk about Cisterna a bit more in the uh, for, in the fourth round because they have four defeats uh, so far. 
and uh, more than a uh, more than a beating uh, Vibo, three zero. Uh, let's go to the to the third round, and uh, uh, I believe that uh, here we had the let's say the the surprise in some way that Luba Trentino was. 3-0 and not that interesting match, but after the match with with Verona by by the side of Trentino, I don't believe that uh, this uh, was such a surprise as, as expected before that. But come on, you you have to give credit to Lube because <laughs> they don't they, they didn't let Trentino do do nothing. Yeah. I was uh, I was thinking on on, on say other war, but let's let's keep let's keep it cool. And I say that uh, Lube now is the Lube that everybody knows and expect that uh, reach that part of the champion uh, of the championship of Serie A, and in the end uh, perform well and win it all. I think now uh, they start to play more volleyball and not with uh, and better, sorry, with the Sheko. Uh, and the attack percentage of Leal and Juan Torreira in that game was impressive. So yeah. 71% for Leal, uh, 60 something for Juan Torreira. Uh, the line of the reception of Trentino uh, was not uh, working. Uh, you saw in the first set, uh, Robert Landis Simon scored three aces in a row. In a so row. Yeah. Uh, that demoralized the team. They, come, they, they came in the second set strong, but it wasn't enough. Uh, Lube did everything and everything goes like, uh, like silk. Everything is smooth um, in, in all aspects of the games. And I think uh, uh, I was a little afraid after that game because uh, Lorenzetti has in, in, in his hands uh, a team that he's never got before. In all those years that he, he he's been coaching um, Trentino, so uh, some people uh, think that he might be in danger uh, because of what happened to the Cisterna coach and in the first uh, in the first tournament like the the cup uh, to was was where was the name of the uh, to, to Bertini. No, the, of, of the Piacenza. Uh, ah, Gardini. Gardini. Gardini, of course. Okay. Now we have two coaches fired in the beginning of the season, so uh, you cannot uh, wait uh, and stay calm in your in your seat because you can lose your job, man. This is a, a hard season for everyone, and if you don't perform well, you can lose your job tomorrow, just like that. I don't know if Nicola have something to say about this topic? Uh, yeah, but just two things. Actually, in Trento, they're pretty... Uh, how can I say? They don't rush to, to sack a coach. They think about it a lot. Uh, three years ago, also, Trentino started pretty bad the, the season. They were, I, I think, 11th by the seventh round. Um, but then they managed to find out their way to, to perform at the, the level they, we, we're expecting from them. And the other side is, um, as you pointed out, Lube played way better. They deserve it. Mm, there's no, no debate about that. But I think Trentino is starting to, to have some, how can I call it, mental issues when they play Lube, a uh, sort of uh, complex when they play them. Because in the last 25 games, the last 25 clashes between those two teams, Trentino won just three of them. And if it's not for the World Cup final, uh, Club World Cup final in 2018. The other two matches that they won, they were pretty useless. The one in the Super Cup didn't lead to anything for Trentino. And uh, another one was in the semi-final two years ago, but Lube won the series 3-1. So especially at the Eurosuale Forum, Lube, Lube's hall, uh, Trentino has never won since Lube started played there since 2017, but I think. I want to mention something. For me, this is the best team of Trentino since the Juan Torena and Matei and Stoichev uh, Definitely. era. Definitely. So you can, uh, of of course, uh, even even better than the team who won against uh, Lube in that final in Poland of Club World Championship, as you mentioned it. But you cannot expect uh, to the owners. I I don't know who is the owner. Uh, that man with the with the mustache. Um, 
Diego Mosna. Diego Mosna. Diego Mosna, of course. He, he was the previous president of Superliga Palavolo. Uh, everybody knows that guy. I don't think he is happy with the performance of the team because he hired an Olympic champion, uh, the best opposite of Europe for me right now, Nimir. You have Janelli, who you, who you re renew his contract, I think to 2023, something like that. And you you invest in your team. Podraskani is there too, so you have all the all these tools to at least one. Uh, uh, win one set or two like the Super Cup uh, against against uh, Lube, and you uh, lose against Verona, uh, a team that is uh, it was the underdog, and Lube you can you can lose uh, against Lube. It's normal. They are a yeah. good team. Yeah, but not, not like that, that badly. But not like that. <laughs> I agree. It's, I agree. Yeah. I don't know if. Uh, uh, both that have uh, anything to comment on this. Topic. We should, I believe that we should take into account that that Trentino, except for for Gianelli and Lissinats, are a completely new team. They have Nimir uh, is a new new player, Lucarelli plus uh, Dikoi plus Apodaraskanin and Rossini. plus plus the Libero. So five out of seven players, the starting seven players are new players. So so I believe that we can let's say assess estimate. Uh, how how this team plays maybe after I don't know at least two, twenty matches even 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 more let's say uh, three to four months maybe I believe I believe so and I have a question to Oni Oni do you think that maybe it's a bit early but do you think that Lube can play better with the Checo than than with Bruno? Uh, I I have to say something I don't like Bruno the touch that he have he can be. I don't know, uh, in some kind of way, uh, a good leader on the court, but uh, the technique that he uses uh, is not as that good as the Sheko. What is the problem with the Sheko? He tends to fall in the uh, decision moments. You know, uh, they won the first two sets when Lube won the, the, the Scudetto, and after that, uh, Perusia disappeared. So uh, this uh, this kind of thing also happened when uh, Piacenza uh, reached the final years ago, and uh, Juan Torena, Trentino, and Kaczynski in that that time uh, won the championship. Uh, the, the Checo was the setter of Piacenza, and uh, is it, it was something that Robert Landi said to me years ago. Uh, in the hard moments, he tends to fall. So I don't know if uh, it's uh, like you say, it's too early to to understand how well can the Checo perform with this team of Lube. But one thing is for sure, they are an experienced team. Everyone uh, less than Balasso and Rilicki have more than 30 years old. So they they you took that Lube team. And you can uh, put it into the VNL or the Olympics, and they can won the the tournament because they are uh, mentally prepared for that. Uh, so if uh, if Lube for me don't reach the final this year, uh, there will there uh, will be not uh, explanation or justification to to defend uh, to defend them. So I think it's uh, their duty to at least reach the final of the Scudetto. I believe that Nicole was shaking his head when I asked the question. No, uh, <laughs> at, at, yeah, at the beginning, but I totally agree what what he was saying uh, about uh, Bruno and, and De Checo. Bruno is, well, we're talking about two of the best, I think, three or four uh, setters in the world. So uh, it, it's always difficult to, to say something bad uh, about them. But uh, Bruno is definitely more a leader than the Checo, and I think that no one on planet Earth has better ends than the Checo. Uh, so I totally agree with him, except for, I mean, in 2013, when the final was Trento against Piacenza, Piacenza was the clearly underdog of, uh, of the final. Uh, the Checo may have let the team down, maybe in key points, as you said, but actually, it, that wasn't uh, a final that should have reached the fifth game in uh, in this season. Trento should have won it before. 
So in the, especially in the home games for, for Piacenza, I think that the Czech could play pretty well. You have to take account that it was also his first final ever uh, at such a high level. So you can expect some some mistakes, some letdowns. But I, I definitely agree with, with Ronnie and uh, what he said. And I also agree with the fact that there's a feeling in Trento that this is the best team, at least on paper, uh, since the 2015, the last time that Trento uh, won a title. Uh, no one expected Trento to be in the final or to win a title in the past five years after uh, Rado left to be, after, after Lorenzetti take on the team, uh, no one expected them to win a title. Everyone saw Perugia and Lube better. This year, I think they have to win a title. Whether it's the Coppa Italia or the the uh, Scudetto, the Championship, they, or maybe they, they the Champions, be... or maybe the Champions League. Who knows? They, <laughs> they have to qualify for the Champions League because in the next oh. preliminary round they will face a Dinamo Mosca, Dinamo Moscow, uh, which has more game on their shoulders than uh, than Trento. Uh, we we'll see. I, I think and they, they have. They... And they have four four wins out of four matches, I believe, in the Russian league, Dinamo Moscow, with with Setsukov, the former Trentino. Player. Yeah, the the opposite. Yes. Uh, so I I I, I could put my signature after what Ronnie said in the past five minutes. I thought it was with Jabreski Wigil. They have they will have the to to fight for that spot. But if we it, it is with Dinamo Moscow. I think we'll yeah, be it is. much harder to than Wiggle, so let's see what Definitely. happens. So, anything else? Dinamo Moscow. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yes. No, I just add that the third team of the preliminary round were are the Swiss team of uh, Volley Amsril, and there shouldn't be problem with them. It was. It will be about uh, Dinamo Moscow and, and Trentino Volley. Who win that clash will will get to the Champions League. Talking about that, Arms will. Why Masek lose all those games, man? I I, this... <laughs> I don't know. I watched them. And they were pretty pretty good team. I was wondering year, but... because you know Chaumont, the team of Cuba in France, have to face uh, uh, Noliko Masek in the first round of the Sec Cup, and, and, and I thought that Answil or Soligors will be the, the the team to to match to to meet them, but uh, Masek, man. Well, this is a crazy season. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> by the by, by the way, uh, it's it's a little bit off the topic, but uh, as you mentioned, Shumon, we are here Bulgarian, Italian, Cuban, and Shumon is a Bulgarian, Italian, Cuban team because the <laughs> Silva, Silvano Prandi is the head coach. We had there how many Cubans? Two, three, three, three plus uh, Georgi Petrov, the Bulgarian outside hitter. So. So, 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 Chaumont in France is is the is the volleyball, uh, the volleyball team which is equivalent to volleyball explained podcast. And <laughs> by the way, by the way, by the way, this is this is the time to uh, to remind you that you can subscribe to the channel if, if you if you like our brilliant uh, uh, and and also uh, and also to follow to follow all our pages uh, which are in the description below. I, I would like from this round to highlight also the the performance of Ivo Valentia. I, I haven't watched uh, their match, but Milano had uh, Milano had three out of four matches won, and only the match against Vibo Valentia was lost. Uh, have, has been lost. So so I believe that we underestimated them in the in the in the first episode of our Italian podcast a bit with with Rosar with Neto with Chester Shinenies uh, plus uh, the the setter David Saita I believe that that the, the middle the, this middle in the table will be very interesting and each team can win again uh, each of the other teams Just to say that uh, Betori is still uh, uh, bad of uh, in in those games with uh, Mons and with with Modena sorry and Luis Elian Estrada start to make his appearance more and more I think that I don't know man Betori have uh, scoring about two or three points in the last two games uh, I I know that uh, Luis Elian is uh, young he's only 20 years old but 
you you can see the face of Vettori when he make a, a mistake. He like he doesn't care too much or he he's sad sad face. And when you see Elian, uh, you see joy or, or or courage or 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 any of those things that can bring uh, together a team of of men and and to play volleyball. Uh, he was uh, he was decent, not too brilliant in this uh, game of, uh, of of third round, but in the fourth round that we will uh, speak uh, now. Uh, 50% uh, more points. Uh, unfortunately, they they lose. But I think it's time to Gianni uh, think more about the starting lineup because uh, Betori cannot show in the court like this. Uh, I feel sorry for him because I know he is an important player in Italy. Maybe not not important as a few years ago, but. Uh, he still, uh, uh, he still have, uh, I mean, I think something that that remains from those years in Modena. So uh, let's see what happens in the future. And now I think it's time to talk about the round four, if you think. Yes, I believe if that I... that was a good introduction to round four. Like, could I just add one thing about the the third round? Because we have some interesting. Uh, uh, tactical adjustment in the in the game between Cisterna and Piacenza, mm -hmm. where uh, Tubertini, who at the end of the game will be sacked by Cisterna because they lost, uh, played Svart, the Canadian middle blocker, as an opposite, and the guy scored 22 points in four sets, so he did a good job. And uh, as you've shown in your video in the past, uh, Bogdan, um, Bernardi decided to, to take out Grozer, who was having a very bad game, and put Antonov as an opposite, which is one of the positions he could, in, as emergency, playing. And Antonov stayed on the court till the last um, play of the game. So basically, we had the two opposites in the game that, that are not opposites. Um, next one, fourth round. With Monena losing against Milano one to three, as mm. uh, as Ronnie mentioned, Estrada played the half of half of the match and uh, Vettori the first half, and uh, Estrada was, yeah, I believe better also in terms of uh, in terms of percentage in attack attack efficiency. Uh, I believe that Milano is one of the surprises by now, not big surprise, but they are I believe third in the in the in the ranking, third with nine points out of uh, twelve. So, Patri is a very good substitute of, of Nimir from last season. So, I believe that, uh, that they, if they can keep up, they can even fight for top four instead of, the, uh, instead of uh, uh, Modena, because we are talking a lot about the fact that Modena will... It's very likely that they're going to be out of, of the top four. Uh, maybe here is here is also the time to talk about uh, talk a bit more about uh, top volley Cisterna because they lost all of their first four matches and they changed the the coach Lorenzo Tubertini with Slobodan and Kovac the the former coach of Slovenia the, the the head coach of the Serbian national team and he was also okay, head coaching uh, yes yes uh, yes and just uh, uh, Jaszewski also in in Poland last season, I he, believe. He was also champion with Hal Bank uh, in that team with Jaroszewelo and Fernando Hernandez uh, three seasons ago. So yes, I think uh, everything is uh, looking like Milano, Modena, uh, Monza, maybe Verona. Who knows? Can fight for that for the place. Uh, it's an interesting uh, fight between those uh, medium team. Uh, I don't want any anyone to get uh, angry when I say medium, because they are not contenders. Uh, everybody knows that they can fight. Verona proved that in the second in the second round, and and proved that the game after after the disappointing performance in the Italy Cup. But uh, they, they, they still want to fight, especially Kaczynski, 
who saw who, who I saw uh, saw them yesterday against Perugia and let me put a parenthesis right here Perugia with Fred Leon have 17 aces is the second uh, number of aces uh, in his career up in Italy after the first season who uh, which in the four first round he scored 20 so three aces less than the, than two years ago and we are talking about the man that has uh, that hold the record of aces in a season with 133 uh, uh, if I'm correct with the statistics of the Liga Palabolo and he scored in that season 52 more aces than the second place that was Atanasi Jevic. So we can with totally sure say that Wilfredo de Leon is the, I think, the best ser serve uh, player from uh, of the last 20 years that has shown uh, in the in the in the Superliga. I was looking all the stats through those years uh, after the rally point was implemented. And the the man that got more close was I think uh, uh, Sartoretti with with eighty something maybe maybe I'm wrong but uh, this is a important topic to discuss because I think uh, what I saw last last night when I rechecked the game and what I saw in the first round is not normal. You have your team winning by five points. And then comes Leon and win the game. And this hurts me a lot. And I, I'm sure that uh, both of them uh, all uh, same, the same because Verona was close to, to reach that set. But unfortunately, Leon came and like you say in the private, in the messenger, boom, 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 the game is over. So I, I yeah. don't know. By the way, Verona was was close in all sets. Uh, for example, in the second set, the, the team was trailing 22-23 and they had a counter-attack, but Matei sent the ball out of bounds and then they made a stupid mistake in interception. But the title of our podcast episode of the podcast today is Who Can Stop Vilfredo Leon? So, so my question to you is Who Can Stop Vilfredo Leon? Is, is anybody able to stop Vilfredo Trentino Leon? Trentino or Lube? Any, anything else of those teams, they 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 surely can, or they can wait till mid season or late season that Lyon uh, feel the, the the tiredness of, of of carrying all the nights this uh, team of uh, of player that look like the Cleveland Cavaliers of LeBron James when LeBron James was playing in Cleveland. So every single night that I see Perugia games is the same. Leon carrying the team, uh, cover the mistake of his teammates, and like you say, they were close, uh, Verona were close, because taking off Leon, Perugia is a normal team. They have good players, Atanasijevic you know, is not play, uh, playing, exactly. sorry, exactly. And, and you have uh, this... Uh, Constant change between Sharon and Ter Horse, and you can do that. You 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 can uh, have so so many, uh, let's say, uh, to be not secure about your your starters. You know, so this for for that, I think Verona ha was close to win at least a set. I don't know if uh, if Nicola thinks the same. Yeah, definitely, especially with Altanasevich out of the game for these four first games. Uh, Leon carried the team in a spectacular way. He has been the best scorer of every game played by Perugia this year. And uh, I think that the other, how can I say, star player that is actually in the roster without Altanasevich is Sole. For me, is on the top five of the middle blockers in Italy. But except of... Uh, him, uh, Leon, uh, the 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 comparison you've made between uh, Leon and the Cleveland Cavaliers of LeBron in 2017 is, is perfect. I think <laughs> it's something that actually uh, actually fit uh, with uh, 
with that. Who can stop Perugia uh, if Trentino keep on playing the way they played against Piacenza, which was the way people want Trentino to play, because the, they made a great team performance. There was, uh, to the moment, the, they ended with the 68% of uh, attacking, which is at the moment the best performance uh, in general in the in the Super Lega. And uh, Nimir showed it's always reliable. Finally, Lucarelli seems to fit in uh, in the game. And, uh, and if the reception could provide Giannelli with some options, uh, we can have uh, someone who could stop them. And we will see because on Sunday there will be uh, per Trento against Perugia in Trento. And this is a great exam for both teams, I think. And Bogdan talked about Milan and I, I agree with him that Milano could be one of the surprises. Uh, but we have to take in account that except of the the success against Modena in the last round, they played against Cisterna, Monza, and Vibo Valencia. Yeah, yeah. Also Not exactly true. three of the teams we we highlighted as some of the contenders. So I think that in five, four games, we will have a more um, clear uh, sight of what the rest of the season uh, will be. And uh, Trentino, and especially Lube, uh, will be the, the ones trying to stop this Perugia. That if Leon will keep performing like that, with the addition of Atanasiewicz, will be probably the most dangerous team in the league till the end. By the way, where is Atanasiewicz? Because I hear something that he was in Spain doing some, some, time, some kind of treatment. Yeah, if to, to heal uh, the problem uh, he has. But if I don't wrong, it should be in the list on the of the last match. It was on the bench, maybe, or in the stands. Um... Because uh, if we look at the stats on the Lega Volley, Atanasiewicz is uh, listed on the... Yes, he is listed, yes. Well, the... he is listed. The only thing for sure we can say is that next week or next week, no, tomorrow, uh, Perugia will have the first challenge of this season in Serie A with everything that uh, that it takes to to say this, uh, sorry, uh, it will be an interesting match, of course. Uh, where is, actually, where is the match playing in Toronto? Uh, on Sunday, yeah, not tomorrow. Oh, so, uh, because t t Trento will not play in the fourth round, in the fifth, sorry. He should have played against Modena, but the league uh, postponed the, the game in November because Trento uh, may have had uh, hosted uh, um, the preliminary round of the Champions League. So uh, they, they're not going to play. Uh, tomorrow, Perugia will play with Cisterna, so I think there wouldn't be too much problems for them. Yes, let's say that we are recording on Tuesday, so... And uh, uh, I'm, right. I'm not I'm, I'm not exactly sure that that we are going to uh, to um, succeed publishing until the until the fifth round. But you're going to to watch that maybe on I don't know when when it's ready. <laughs> uh, but by the way, as a comparison to the to the sh to, to the schedule of, of of Milano, for example, Verona played with Perugia, Lube, Tantino, and and Monza. And Lube. So so, so it's. Uh, it's it's not that fair to to compare it, and uh, let's let's say again that Perugia is leading leading with uh, twelve points, uh, followed by Lube with eleven and Milano with with nine and five teams with six points. So I believe that we will need a bit more time in order to uh, to to get ready to to assess the teams uh, more in depth, uh, and now. What we should do now? Maybe we can go to our uh, lovely rubric about volleyball lessons in Italian. Yeah, may, may or... I uh, uh, say just to one last time because I just oh, checked okay. this that to Ronnie, uh, the the player who hold the record before uh, Leon with 94 in the rally point system was actually Juan Torena, who scored 76. Uh, no, sorry, 67 in uh, 2012. Uh, so they basically. From 60, a Cuban tune. 67. 67. So, uh, like 6 and 9, right? What? Uh, 6 and 9. 67. 6, six and 9. 
six and nine or six and seven. Okay. I, I don't get. <laughs> no, well, it was one Torrent, of course, the the famous Pikios money, Pikios money, eh, yeah, eh, and, and, <laughs> the uh, chance, and of course, uh, well. Uh, everything stays in my home in Cuba, so thank you for exactly. that. Exactly, <laughs> that, that was why I was pointing out uh, it was him and some Monteiro, which played in Montichiari in 2004. The two guys with 67 holding the, the records. But as you pointed out, 94 is 27 more races than, uh, than one Torino and one season. Basically, it's like they've played another half of season uh, for, for the other. The no, other but two just players. because I. I count the regular season plus playoff, you know, because they, they, they those players play in teams that always make it to the final. So you have to count not only the regular season, but all the season long. So that's it. Yeah, yeah, but if you count the regular season, you're sure that uh, every player has the same amount of games played. Because... Uh, sometimes, you go... sometimes, yes. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but you can they, count it per set. So it's... It, it, that is, the count per set is also something uh, you can step on because if a player play ten sets with two tie breaks, they have he has two sets the last till the fifteen, uh, 15, 15 points. Mm -hmm. But if he played uh, uh, ten sets uh, with uh, three zero, two zero, three one, he had ten complete sets to rack up the stats. So. It's difficult to, to throw yeah. a comparison, but in this time it's pretty easy because if you've got someone that scored more than 30 ace than yeah. the second, <laughs> it's not even... We'll a... have to wait till, I think, middle of the season, maybe January, February, to say that maybe Leon will break his own record, or maybe not, you know, things can change, he can, he can be, hope not, uh, injured or, or something like that, you know, but who knows? Well, if Perugia keeps on winning 3-0, probably nah, that's gonna not. Ha that's that's not going to happen with with, <laughs> I, with your team or maybe mine. But uh, as you can see, I support in, uh, in, uh, today Leon. So uh, let's see what happens. Uh, and last time, uh, and last time, Lube. Uh, Those are so, my teams. Yeah. Oh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I I will win no ma no matter what this season because I have Sosa in Trentino. <laughs> if you win, so I have uh, Leo in Perugia and have the four Cubans in. in who 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 will gonna win? Ver Verona? <laughs> I don't think so, my friend. So yes. And the Strada Mazzora actually in Modena. So if the the contender is an outsider, then Modena. <laughs> okay, no. No, uh, it's un unlikely. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the let's go to the Italian words. <laughs> Yeah, I, I usually I, I would follow the path uh, of the Polish uh, example. So the three words were uh, opposite spiker, which is in Italian is pretty similar, is opposto. Uh, coach is allenatore. And referee is arbitro. So when you watch the, the games and see the players and their lips go like, Arbitro, they're talking to the to the referee or try to catch his attention at least. So so let's let's make the summary like we did it in the Polish podcast. So we have the opposite, opposto, the setter, poleggiatore, scacciatore, the outside hitter, outside spiker, receiver, and uh, uh, the, the middle blocker is the the centrale. Centrale. Il centrale. Libero, yes. obviously. Libero, libero is libero is an Italian is, word. Uh, <laughs> so. uh, do, do, do you know if there is any any language where libero is not called libero? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't so. think so, yes, too. Uh, yeah. And uh, Alenatore is uh, the head coach. And I believe that was all for today. Uh, maybe we are going to, to... I believe that we are going to make the next episode of the podcast after the, after the seventh round, which will be played on 25th of October. So another three rounds will be played. So we are going to have more, more matches to, to estimate, to assess and to, to make uh, our comments on. And uh, again, follow us in our platforms in Facebook, uh, in uh, Instagram and uh, here in YouTube and also in Twitter uh, when we talk about Pilole di Voli, the, uh, the, the page of, uh, of Nicola. And 
Uh, if you like our content in Volleyball Explained, you can also support us in our Patreon account, which is also below in the descriptions. Thank you guys for uh, making this uh, this podcast. Uh, uh, today, I believe that it was a very uh, useful discussion about the second, third and the fourth uh, round in the Italian League. And I believe that uh, uh, this season will be... Um, very interesting, especially in terms of the of the games in the middle of the table, but also this clash between Perugia and Lube. The last episode we called it a three horse race, maybe. If Trentino is playing against Verona, it won't be. Uh, if they're playing against Piacenza, maybe it will be a three horse race, but but we'll see a bit a bit later. So so thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and uh, everything else. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye guys.